Hi, it's The Wire. It's Thursday, September the 13th, 2018. Let's throw out some picks here for week two of the NFL season. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me also say too, every week I'll post the picks at bettingangle.us, a free site, as well as gamblersadvisory.com. The first play I like, and keep in mind, these are plays that I grabbed earlier in the week. So you want to check the line, right? There may have been some line movement. We're making this video before the Thursday night game is played, right? Understand the line might shift further on Friday and on Saturday. The first play I like are the Indianapolis Colts getting six points. Six against the Washington Redskins in Washington. I believe Andrew Luck is an elite quarterback. I like the fact that Luck found Eric Ebron, a guy who was physically gifted and who with Luck might be able to do things at the tight end position. Notice too that Jack Doyle, the other tight end, caught a lot of balls. Right? I haven't even gotten to T.Y. Hilton, who's their best wide receiver, or Ryan Grant. In other words, Luck has a lot to work with. Now, I'm not saying the Indianapolis Colt defense is up to par, but that Bengals score from week one was a bit deceptive. Right? I like the Colts here getting six points. That's a lot of points to give an elite quarterback, right? Let me also say, too, I know the Redskins looked great week one. No question about it. The Alex Smith era has started in Washington. But I don't view Alex Smith as a guy who's going to put a lot of points up on the board week after week. He's not a gunslinger. He's more of a cautious quarterback. To me, the six-point spread is simply too much. Next, I have a money line play. I like the Denver Broncos at home over the Oakland Raiders. Now, I'm in the Bay Area. I think Oakland is a mirage. I believe John Gruden showed up, looked around, saw an old roster, and thought to himself, you know what, this team needs to be rebuilt. So then, Khalil Mack, unsigned, wanted a lot of money, wanted, quite frankly, his market value. You're talking about a rear NFL player who was a pro bowler in two different divisions, uh, two different positions, right? Great player. Now, if Gruden thought he was close, close to challenging for the AFC Championship, there is no way he lets this player leave. None. I believe he looked around, saw an old roster, saw a quarterback who isn't quite the same since he broke his leg, and decided that this was a rebuilding year. Right? By contrast, Case Keenum, and I know the turnovers last week are a concern, but Case Keenum threw something like three touchdowns last week. Right? Let me go one step further. The most dominant defensive performance I saw in week one was not Khalil Mack, and he looked magnificent. It was Vaughn Miller chasing down one of the NFL's most mobile QBs, Russell Wilson, time after time. Vaughn Miller is in mid-season form. Given that Derek Carr is a checkdown king these days, given that Derek Carr is hearing footsteps before the defender even gets in the pocket, I think Oakland's going to implode against Denver. I like Denver here. You're getting a reasonable minus 255 on the money line. Right next, I like the Saints. Money line, minus 380. Bit expensive at home against the Cleveland Browns. Folks, the Saints lost week one at home. You can imagine how they've spent their week thinking about that loss. 
I know Cleveland had a chance to beat Pittsburgh, but that was a game marred by a lot of turnovers. Also, Tyrod Taylor really wasn't that good at quarterback. The offense really didn't look good. It was off track, right? You mean to tell me the only reception that Josh Gordon got was a touchdown? You couldn't find a way to get him the ball more? I don't think Cleveland's hitting on all cylinders on offense. You're going to have to be. If you're going to beat the Saints, who need a win, and are playing their second consecutive home game. By the way, the Saints were an offensive juggernaut in week one. It was just that Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers outdid them. Right? I think the Saints show up here and show you how a superstar offense, and I mean superstar. Folks, look at Alvin Kamara's numbers from week one. I think they show you how a superstar offense gets back to 500. I like the Saints here on a money line, right? Next, you heard me mention Ryan Fitzpatrick. Wow, he looked great week one, didn't he? Right? Spectacular. I believe they gained something like 14 yards per completion or something like that. But understand that Deshaun, he's banged up. He's in concussion protocol. Understand, too, that they're playing a Philadelphia Eagle defense that put the kibosh on the Atlanta Falcons in week one. Folks, this defense is loaded. Let me go one step further. I know Mike Evans is a beast, no question about it. Think about, think about what Atlanta's top receiver, Julio Jones, did week one against Philly. And yet that Atlanta offense was stagnant, wasn't it? In other words, Philly is the kind of shutdown defense that can have one superstar wide receiver explode against them and still keep you from scoring 30 points, right? To me, Philly's defense alone justifies taking Philly and laying three points on the road against Tampa Bay, right? Couple that with the injury to Tampa's wide receiver. And I think Philly covers here. I like Philly laying three points on the road at Tampa Bay. Right? Let's continue. I know week one, things are out of sync. Eli Manning didn't have the best week. No question about it. Take away the big run from Saquon Barkley. And Saquon really didn't have a great day. But folks, how do I put this politely? This New York Giant offense is loaded. You can't go back to last year because last year some key pieces, guys like Odell Beckham, were injured for a huge part of the season, right? You can't go back to last year because Eli Manning didn't have Pat Shermer as his head coach, right? Pat Shermer, I believe last year, turned Case Keenum into a great player. I believe this giant offense is on the on-ramp about to take off. Right? You look at the tight end, you look at the wide receivers, right? Shepard and Beckham. You look at the quarterback, take a hard look at Eli Manning's numbers from last year. Keep in mind, again, this was a craftsman who didn't even have his weapons. Right? Odell Beckham, one of the best wide receivers in the league, wasn't even there for a big portion of the year. And Eli Manning still put up decent numbers. Right? I think the public thinks Ben McAdoo is still coaching this team. 
I don't think the public understands that this team has one of the most loaded offensive ensembles in the league. And, of course, they're playing the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. Who is Dak throwing the ball to? Things are so dodgy at wide receiver in Dallas that they claim that at a recent Jay-Z concert. Jerry Jones met and talked with Des Bryant. I think Jerry's looking around and Jerry's wondering, wow, where's our big play capability? Right, folks? The passing game for the Dallas Cowboys looks anemic. Right? They were not in sync week one. They just weren't. I think the problem's deep. I think the problem is structural. You're getting three points with the Giants in Dallas. Right? Divisional game. The teams know each other. I like the New York Giants here getting three points. Both teams are 0-1. Both teams need the win. Let's also be real. The Giants' limited offensive performance in week one of this season was against perhaps the league's best defense, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Right? They're not going up against Jalen Ramsey and company this week. The Cowboy defense, let's be blunt, doesn't compare to the Jacksonville Jaguar defense. Let's remember, too, the Jags played New England tough in the AFC Championship game last year. So I think you have to look at week one of this season, the giant performance, and you have to say to yourself, okay, that was against an elite defense. Well, now they're facing a non-elite defense that doesn't have, right, doesn't have key pieces. I don't know what the real story is on Randy Gregory right now. Right? I'm not sure. And then offensively, folks, two of Dak's favorite people, Jason Witten, Des Bryant, they're no longer there. Right? They're not there. I like the Giants getting three points against the Dallas Cowboys. Let's throw out, finally, a money line play. You look at the numbers. I know they lost week one, but that's where the value is. On teams that did well but lost. You look at the numbers, and wow. This Charger offense is loaded. Look at the yards per play from week one. Right? This Charger offense is loaded. They did a lot. They just didn't win the game. Right? So now, <laughs> they're traveling. They're traveling across country to play the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo. Right? The Bills are talking about starting a rookie quarterback against a very rough defense. Joey Bosa's hurt. He probably misses the game. But the Chargers have a very rough defense. And let's face it, they're just more offensively blessed than the Bills this year. Right? The Bills are having so much problems on offense. Peterman's out already. Right? If you had LaShawn McCoy in a fantasy pool from week one, you know that offense wasn't clicking. So you're telling me that I get the Chargers, who are 0-1 and need the win, at a minus 300 against a Bill team that got blown out week one, that just doesn't have the talent to match the Chargers, personnel-wise. And that starting a rookie quarterback. I like the Chargers here on a money line. I view it as free money. I think especially after last year, where the Chargers started the season slowly. And it hurt them in the long run, in making the postseason. 
right? This year, I believe the Chargers are going to be energetic. They're not going to let the plane ride get to them. They know they can't blow the first part of the season. I like the Chargers here on a money line on the road at Buffalo. Those are the picks I like. Let me hear from you. Tell us your picks. Tell us which lines interest you. Tell us which injuries interest you. Tell us any inside information you've come across or any betting trend information that you feel might be helpful to the fellow gamblers here online. Thanks for stopping by.